Good evening, everyone. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Hello, Rosa. How do you feel today? I'm fine, teacher. All right. You feel I'm better. Pretty today. <laughs> All right. All right. Now you feel better. Thank God. All right, guys. Here we are. Hello, Karen. How are you doing tonight? Hi, teacher. I'm sorry. My dog is here. <laughs> oh, I see him. Uh, is it a she or a he? He. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, I can Coming. see him. <laughs> all yeah. right. What's his name? Beethoven. Oh, hello, Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> He's happy. <laughs> all right, he loves you. I hate that. <laughs> oh, but he loves you. Hello, Andrea. How are you doing tonight? Hello, Ellen Nilsson. Welcome. Hello, teacher. Hi. Hi, Jose Abel. Hello, Blanca, Hernan, Hello, welcome. Good evening. Welcome, everyone. We are going to start the class. So is everybody ready to start? I'm ready, All Hello. right, very good. Here we go. Okay, we are going to try to start by calling the attendance because, okay, that's the requirement from Insofar. That's the first step in our agenda. So we need to, right? It's not that I want to be annoying. It's our requirement, all right? Andrea Sofia Benitez Gomez. Uh, present teacher. All right, there you are. <laughs> Blanca Alejandra Portillo Bermudez. Present teacher. Okay. There is a baby. All right. Carlos Ernesto Perez. Carlos Roberto Alemán Prudencio. Claudia Yamilet. Corea. Present teacher. Present okay, teacher. Claudia. Uh, Welcome. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Ellen Nilsson Aparicio del Cid. Present teacher. Eric Jose Hernandez Campos. Eric, you there? You are muted. Hazel Elizabeth Navarro de Cervellón. No Hazel tonight. Henry Alberto Perez Rosales. Good evening, teacher. I'm, I'm here. All right. Hernan Antonio Chacon López. Present, teacher. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Juan Francisco Salmeron Alas. No Juan tonight yet. All right. Karen Jamilet Rivas de Ayala. Present, teacher. Okay. Magdiel Esaú García Morales. Present teacher. Okay. Rafael Alexander Serna Diaz. No Rafael tonight. Rafael Antonio Barrera Diaz. Okay. Ricardo Tony Mendoza Castro. Rosa del Carmen Santa María Tobar. Present teacher. Okay. Santos Ezequiel Núñez Mejía. Okay, today is the four, right? Wilber Alberto Perez Mendez. Present teacher. Okay. Jose Abel Isaguirre Mendoza. You're present teacher. All right. Pedro Alexander Osorto Sanchez. Pedro. Present teacher. There you are. All right. 
Okay, people, we are gonna start the class by uh, re uh, reminding or recalling what- Good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening, Rafael. How are Hello. you doing tonight? Uh, I'm good, sorry for the late. All right, for the delay, all right. I will check you in. Just give me one second. And here we are. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we were saying about, we were talking about um, instructions and directions. Remember tonight, tonight we are going to uh, end this unit, unit two. So everybody knows now um, what's directions and what's instructions, all right? That's a slightly difference, right? Because it's, just a little difference. And sometimes we can think that it's indifferent to use directions or instructions, right? But usually um, instructions are giving commands, giving orders and directions are using the commands to uh, say something, how to do some, something, right? So yes, um, it could be mostly the difference. All right, so now we are going to start. Just allow me to um, share the screen with you. And well, directions and instructions is you need to, this is your video conference number 10, all right? Video conference number 10. And uh, we have a reading activity tonight. I'm excited for that activity. I'm expecting that everything is going to be all right. Okay then, video conference number 10. And tonight we have our review and practice, right? We practice the vocabulary, we practice grammar, we practice listening, we practice speaking, all right? Using all the target vocabulary. The objective for tonight is that you will be able to provide and follow either or directions uh, or instructions, right? La idea es que podamos tanto dar in una instrucción o decir, dar dirección, ¿verdad? O también seguirla, entenderla, comprenderla, right? So our agenda for tonight, it seems short, but each, each activity, it's kind of hard, all right? It, takes time, each of the activities takes time. So um, first we are going to talk about the imperatives, remember, to give instructions in some uh, emergen em emergency cases, right? Like fire or maybe in a, an earthquake or well, mostly in a fire, right? And well, they, objective and the topic has been presented and we have this reading exercise and the breakout rooms we are um, solving these written exercises we have in the student book right and the session one on one one is available it doesn't mean that you are not going to stay guys okay so take advantage of that uh, opportunity, all right, to have these uh, 10 minutes of practice with your teacher, all right? So let's start. Let's start by talking about the page 25, right, of our, 24 it is, of our manuals. Remember, we had a list, we had a list of instructions we should, uh, I mean, we had to provide to a group of visitors, right? Okay, so I made mine, I have my list. So I hope you remember your list from the manual, 
all right? And let's follow these instructions step by step. Let's imagine we are in a fire, right? Uh, so we want to um, mock this, all right? All right. <clears throat> I wrote safety instructions in case of a fire, right? In, in case of fire. First, according to your book, it has to say locate an evacuation route, right? An evacuation route. I'm oh, sorry, give me one second. I want to have ready the video I sent, all right? Because that's not about an emergency uh, situation. It's to prevent emergency situations. It's to prevent incidents and accidents, all right? Remember the video I sent? ¿Se acuerdan del video? ¿Lo vieron del video? Estas que estamos viendo ahorita son para cuando ya sucede, ¿verdad? Y se da el, la situación o el evento del, del incendio. Pero hay una serie de reglas eh, que son de seguridad, ¿verdad? Eh, podríamos decir más que todo seguridad industrial que les mandé por ahí para prevenir, ¿ok? To prevent. Right now, just give me one second. All right. Uh, ahí lo teníamos en el WhatsApp, pero yo le he puesto a mi teléfono que no me mande las eh, fotos al, a la galería y eso me, es lo que me cuesta. Ok. Bien, por ahí tenemos el video también, ¿verdad? Todos tengan listo el video también. Vamos a ver, vamos a leer estas en este orden. Ok, aquí nos falta. Do not. Vamos a ver. Locate an evacuation route. Stay calm. Call the fire department. Don't use the elevator. Don't get back for personal objects. And imagine it is your, uh, I mean, if you forgot your cell phone. Oh my, right? But you cannot go back, all right? Do not use any fire extinguisher and follow instructions from the rescue team. Don't get close to the fire. Go to the meeting point. Lock the emergency fire exit door. All right, now it's your time to read, all right? It's your turn to read. So please, Pedro, read from one to five. Uh, locate an evacuation route. Two, stay calm. Three, call the fire department. Four, don't use the elevator. Five, uh, don't get bad for personal objects. Thank you. Now from six to 10, Abel, please. Number six. Yes, to 10. Okay, do not use any fire extinguish. It's Extinguisher. 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 Okay. Follow instruction from the rescue team. Don't get close to the fire. Go to the meeting point. Look, look, the emerging emergency, emergency fire exit door. All right. This word, the stress is an mer. Emergency, emergency. Emergency, mm -hmm. emergency. Mm -hmm. Fire exit door. This is, uh, these are special doors uh, precisely mm, to be used 
when uh, in case of fire, right? So it means that those exit doors must be locked, all right? Because the way of locking of those doors is only one way, right? Only one way, but it allowed to open from the other side, all right? So those must be locked, all right? And by law, they have to, all right, by law. All right, now, is there any comments so far about these instructions? Algun comentario? Yes, Tell me. I have a question. Tell me. Okay, why not use any fire extinguisher? Ah, that's a very interesting question because not all source of fire is the same, right? The, the combustion starts uh, because of different materials. And if you use an extinguisher that it is not proper for that material, then you may cause uh, a siniestra, right? You, you may cause this to make it bigger, right? So that is why, or maybe you can be harmed. You can be harmed for that extinguisher. So the best thing you can do is to investigate, right? The kind of extinguishers and, that there are in your company and what um, materials, or uh, I don't remember the word for that, but uh, these materials, the flammable, okay? The flammable materials um, that maybe are used in your, in your company. And if, I think they have to be properly installed, right? The, the kind of extinguisher that it is really needed at the time um, or in case of a fire in your company. But you might be informed, all right? You might be informed what kind of okay. extinguisher is for each kind of fire, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. That is why. That is why you don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. But I think that means the most important. Uh, which there one? aren't call to firefighter. Mm, like this one, number three. Ah, okay, okay, okay. All yeah. right. Phew, I passed the exam. Yeah, I yeah. passed it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes, number three, call the fire department. Yeah, call the fire department. But later, later than that, that one, it says don't get back for personal object. Imagine you forget your cell phone maybe in a different place or the, or the line uh, is um, dead, right? It doesn't work. So mm, I'm so sorry, you have to do this. You have to yell fire, right? So you have to do that. Help, it's, there is no other way, right? So yeah. But don't go back, never get back if you forget your uh, cell phone in a place that it is in risk because you are under the risk also, right? Okay, guys. So this is what uh, we want to see. Remember that this is not a fire department class, all right? This is an English class. So we need to know how to write how to say and what do they mean all right so let's look at this these are imperatives all right these are imperatives there is no subject in this sentences right there is no subject we say just the verb at the beginning all right locate stay call mm -hmm. and the negatives don't use por cual podríamos Cambiar este don't use. ¿Por cuál frase que hemos aprendido? Uh -huh. It's not allowed. not allowed. You're not allowed or it's not allowed. All right, it's not allowed. Muchas veces eh, creemos que cuando decimos you are not or when we refer to the um, pronoun you, 
we are saying exactly the person, you, right? Or the plural you, ustedes. But no, you is in general too, all right? You is in general too. So if you say, for example, how do you say um, espejo in English, right? Then you say, you are asking how people, right? Say that. So don't worry if you say you, all right? Um, all right. It's not allowed. It's not allowed mm -hmm. to use the elevator, right? Then we have the other one, number five. It's not allowed to go back. It doesn't make sense, right? But for example, the extinguisher. Oh, there is another strategy that um, these um, safety instructor, uh, instructors um, may do, right? Uh, this is a the strategy. They choose people, all right? They choose people that are authorized and uh, pro because they are properly prepared to use the extinguishers, all right? Maybe there is one in your department that it is um, trained how to use it, when to use it, and what kind of extinguisher they have to use, all right? That's another strategy they use. All right, mm, follow instructions from the rescue team. Yeah, right, that's correct. Uh, the other one, mm -hmm. uh, go to the meeting point. Where is the meeting point in your company? Where is the meeting com uh, point in your company? Punto de reunión. Yes, where is it? Where? Inside, inside the parking lot in my work. All right. All right, in the parking, no. all right. Mm -hmm. Normally, normally it's located uh, out uh, in, in out of a building. Yes, uh-huh, yes, of course. And if the building has a parking on the street, maybe, or near the street, in front of the street, or a parking lot, all right? Maybe sometimes they use that as a meeting point, right? Mostly when they have a lot of employees in, right? Okay, people, is there any other questions so far about this topic, about the safety instructions? Not about what to do, but how to say, all right? how to say, because I'm not a firewoman, all right? I'm not a firefighter, <laughs> okay? Así que no, no sé las cosas más técnicas, sino que las generales que todos conocemos, all right? Pero sí, por lo menos podemos investigar cómo se dice algo, okay? O les ha pasado alguna cosa y no han sabido cómo se expresa. Any question? No question. All right, about the video, okay? About the video. Remember the safety, uh, general safety instructions? All right. Did you watch the video? Si lo I don't watch the video. Didn't you? All right. Then we're going to skip that activity, all right? We're going to skip that activity. Lo que vamos a hacer es que esa actividad se las voy a postear, ¿ok? Con el video para que puedan hacerla en la plataforma, ¿ok? Bien. And we are going to um, pass to the next activity. It's going to take time because we want to do the reading exercise. All right. So let's go to page. Number 27. There we have a reading. So read the following article about giving instructions to staff. You have to check true or false for the eight items below. So um, I prepared a video, so we are going to watch the video. You are going to read this along, all right? Along means que a la vez que van oyendo, ustedes van leyendo, okay? 
it's not that you are going to do it by yourself or solito, ¿verdad? alone. No, that's different. Look, alone and along. Along. Along is leer mientras usted va en el camino. Okay. Get along is como llevarse bien también. Okay. All right. Just give me a minute. Si sí cacharon las dos palabras, ¿verdad? Puede escribir la segunda, teacher. All right. Yes, no problem. Okay, the first one is alone. alone. Alone is the first one, and that's only me, right? Mm -hmm. Only Singular. I. Yeah, no, only me. Yeah, solito. Yeah, and en soledad. Now, along, así, es como alone. a lo largo, ajá, como a lo largo, o mientras algo está sucediendo, otra cosa está pasando, all right? Or Thank two you. things at the same time. All right, that's a long. All right. Por ahí les pasé, it, bueno, intenté, intenté, espero que lo hayan recibido bien y que puedan accesar a ese video. Les mandé a los que tenía correctas las... Um, Direcciones de correo, les mandé este video, ok. De, el sonido está un poco bajo, así que le pueden dar el eh, subir volumen ustedes, ¿ok? Number one, they're gonna assume they know what you mean. You know what they say. That assumption is the mother of all mistakes. Don't get a fool that assumes people know what you mean. Most people in the officer business will be intuitive and switched on, and they are not mind readers. An imperative when delivering clear instructions is to not assume the recipient knows what you mean. And this can be for anything from industry acronyms to hit a contact in different departments or organizations. It will only take you a few seconds more to explain the details. Number two. Be clear and specific. Everyone loves a walk. Dripping in maple, sir, please. But no one likes waffle in conversation, and especially not in an email or when it is a set of instructions. Plus, you don't want to ramble on in your set of instructions. That will be a waste of your time, and to be honest, they eat switch off after a while. You do want to ensure that your instructions are clear specific and concise. Personally, I prefer not to butter it up and will rather get straight to the point of what needs to be optioned or delivered, rather than making the instructions too flowery, which will only confuse. Number three, give time frames. Do not confuse matters by not being specific with your time frames and deadlines. What you consider a sin might be different from your colleagues. If you think sin is the next couple of hours, yet your staff who you have instructed and considered it to be in a few days, then this communication is going 
to have serious implications in any business or project. Number four, give examples. Whenever possible, make sure you give examples. This will be special or beneficial if they are new to the role or if they haven't carried out the task before. This will help to add clarity to your instructions and help form a clearer picture of what it is you mean and want. Se oyó bien. Good. Just teacher. All right. Did you get any idea of what you read and what you heard? What was the video about? What was this reading about? This is an article, right? This is an article. Hmm? Let's talk about the, the importance to be clear when you, when you give some directions to the person. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. In general, teacher, it could be a, a teamwork, uh, just like a, a, how to work in team uh, where, I, uh, where I don't have uh, um, eh, como, como tener una coordinación. Coordination. Uh, well, coordination. Between them. Mm -hmm. Between them. Everybody has to know what to do, when to do it. Yeah, and it has to be clear, right? It has to be clear, all right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the word is teamwork, all right? To do teamwork, mm -hmm. all right. To work in teams, it's another phrase, but teamwork is the best, all right? Ahí hubieron muchas palabras que yo claramente no entendí, pero una que me llamó la atención es la cuando él le, 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 le especificaba, what you mean. Mm -hmm. A lo que te refieres o algo así? No, um, en el contexto que lo tenemos acá es um, what you mean es qué es lo que estás diciendo, ¿ok? ¿Qué es lo que significa lo que estás diciendo? ¿Qué es lo que quieres decir? ¿Mm? Ok. Uh -huh. And that's a very common question. You can ask anyone uh, when you don't understand the concept. It's not the words, but the concept or the meaning of the thing. So, and you don't understand, and you say, what do you mean? Right? What do you mean? Right? What do you mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, then let's go and. ¿Lo quieren oír otra vez? Lo vamos leyendo otra vez? All right, it's only two minutes, right? It's only two minutes. assume they know what you mean. You know what they say. That assumption is the mother of all mistakes. Don't get a fool that assumes people know what you mean. What most people in the officer business will be intuitive and switched on, and they are not mind readers. An imperative when delivering clear instructions is to not assume the recipient knows what you mean. 
and this can be for anything from industry acronyms to hit a contact in different departments or organizations. It will only take you a few seconds more to explain the details. Number two, be clear and specific. Everyone loves a walk. Dripping in maple, sir, please. But no one likes waffle in conversation, and especially not in an email or in a list set of instructions. What you don't want to ramble on in your set of instructions. That will be a waste of your time, and to be honest, they switch off after a while. You do want to ensure that your instructions are clear, specific, and concise. Personally, I prefer not to butter it up and will rather get straight to the point of what needs to be optioned or delivered rather than making the instructions too flowery, which will only confuse. Number three, give time frames. Do not confuse matters by not being specific with your time frames and deadlines. What you consider a sin might be different from your colleagues. If you think sin is the next couple of hours, yet your staff who you have instructed and considered it to be in a few days, then this communication is going to have serious implications in any business or project. Number four, give examples. Whenever possible, make sure you give examples. This will be especially beneficial if they are new to the role, or if they haven't carried out the task before. This will help to add clarity to your instructions and help form a clearer picture of what it is you mean and want. Okay, people. Okay, so now let's go to the uh page 27 in our manuals all right there we are going to visualize this in a simple rating all right in a simple rating now we know what it says we have the idea so now let's go right there Let's make this clear to understand what we are reading. Ya vemos que las lecturas a este nivel ya vamos complicando un poquito, ¿verdad? Siempre, siempre ubiquémonos en subject, verb, and complement to understand ideas, para agarrar ideas. Let's try not to translate. Let's try to understand or associate the words, all right? In the context, all right? In the context. So let's look at the first uh, point or the first item here. It says one, don't assume or assume they know what you mean, right? Let's talk about this. Uh, let's look at Blanca, please read, read this paragraph. Don't assume they know what you mean. You know what they say, that assumption is the mother of all mistakes. Don't be the fault that assumes people know what you mean. With most people in your office or business will be intuitive and switched on. They are not mind readers. An imperative when delivering Clear instruction is to not assume the recipient the knows recipient. what you mean. And this can be for anything from industry acronyms to who to contact in different departments or organizations. It will only, only take you a few seconds more to explain the details. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you very much. All right. Is there any... Question from the vocabulary in this paragraph. Yes, teacher. Uh, 
Switched uh -huh. on. Switched on. All right. Uh, conectados, right? Mm -hmm. Y vi otra, pero no sé si es switch up, pero en otra. Switch up. Up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Apagado. Eh, no, ese sería off. Ese sería off. Switched off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. eh, west o no sé cómo se pronuncia. W -H -I -S -T. Así, así como lo dijo. West, west, west. Okay. Pero ya unido con la otra palabra, esta T es como silent. Was, right? Was most. Was most. Was, was most. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ese es como mientras. Uh, es una, una manera formal de decir mientras que. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Se parece yeah. mucho al uso A de while. while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Recipients, recipient, ¿cómo se pronuncia correctamente? Like that. Recipe. No, recipient. 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 Yes, recipient. Mm -hmm. Okay. And no es recipiente, ¿verdad? Reci en este caso es el que recibe el mensaje. Ok. Uh -huh. O el receptor. Uh -huh. Okay, teacher, thank you. All right. Any other? Rumble. Uh, rumble is uh, moving from rumble here. Rumble. Yeah, uh, moving from here to there, right? Uh, oscilando okay. o vacilar, right? Something like that. Uh -huh. Okay. Body it up. Uh, ponerlo claro, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Flowery. Or flowery is como um, make decorations with flowers. Put it better or putting more words that, than the words that you need. Okay. Mm -hmm. Como ponerle flores, right? Flowery. Mm -hmm. okay. Adornarlo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Esa es, es la idea, okay. Mm -hmm. Or and, use and in necessary part. words also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Y en el caso de uh, get your staff, en este contexto yet, ya no significa aún. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, let me... En, yeah. uh, en, en el párrafo 3. Ah, la... ok. Get your staff. Mm, yes, ajá. Uh -huh. um, this is like... Sería... Um, no es todavía, ni es ya, yeah, sino que... Pero sí es el momento en que ellos... Sí, ya fueron en, a los que, digamos que usted ya le, les dio la instrucción, right? So, por eso es que okay. dice yet. Uh -huh. Ok, uh -huh. o sea, la idea siempre es la misma, nada más. Que... Sí, uh -huh. sí. Eh, no recuerdo otro sinónimo para decirle ahorita, pero es como uh, para los que usted ya instruyó, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Ok. Uh -huh. Ah, sería como incluso también, right? Incluso yeah. al personal a quien, a, a quien han instruido. Yeah, como, ajá, más o menos incluso. Uh -huh. Ok. Uh -huh. All right. Any other question? No more questions? Okay, let's read the paragraph number two. The recommendation number two. It says be clear and specific. Who wants to read this paragraph? Who wants to read this paragraph? A ver, a volunteer. Yeah, teacher. All right, go ahead, please, my deal. Be clear and specific. Everyone loves uh, waffle. Waffle is, is good? Yes, waffle. <laughs> Waffles dripping in maple mm -hmm. syrup. 
Yes. Shadow, please. But no one likes waffle in conversation and especially not in an email for when it is a set of instructions. Wish, wished is good. Whilst. Uh, es lo mismo, eh, prácticamente es el mismo significado de este también mm -hmm. en el ámbito formal, ¿verdad? Como mientras que, all right? Eh, y la pronunciación es west, uh, casi que la L es silent, oh. right? Okay. With you, can, with you don't want to rumble in your own, in your set of instruction. That would be a waste of your time. And to be honest, they'd switch off after a while. Do you want to ensure that your restrictions are clear, specific, and concise? Concise. Concise. Mm -hmm. Okay, concise. Personally, I prefer not to bother it up and would rather get strength to be the, to be the point on what needs mm -hmm. need to mm -hmm. need to be action actioned or delivered rather than making instruction to to flower it, mm -hmm. which will only confuse all right uh, este es butter it up, sería not to butter it up, es um, mezclarlo mucho, ok, hacer, eh, echarle muchos ingredientes a la mezcla, ¿verdad? Y la otra era rumble, que me preguntaba, es más apropiado quizás como redundar, ok. Uh -huh. All right, thank you very much, McDill. Now, give time frames. Give time frames. Number three. Who wants to read it, guys? Hi. All right. Go ahead, please. Ver, give, right? give time frames. Do not confuse matters by not being specific with your time frame, frames. And deadlines what you consider as soon might be very different from your colleague, colleagues. Colleagues. Uh, colleagues. Colleagues. Mm -hmm. colleagues, okay. Very different from your colleagues. If you think soon is the next couple of hours. Couple, yet, couple of hours, couple of hours. Couple, okay, is the next couple of hours. hours. Yet your staff who you have instruct, instructed, considered it to be in a few days, then this communication is going to have serious implication in any business or project. All right, thank you very much. And we have an exclamation um, mark right here. So, the intonation has to be like that, right? Like uh, yeah, your staff who you have instructed consider it to be in a few days, then this communication is going to have serious implications in any business or project, all right? So yeah. Okay. There Thank you are. You. Now let's continue with number four. Who wants to read number four? Only one, please. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Yep. <laughs> there you are. Are you ready? Give oh. give example number four. Yes, please. Whenever possible, make sure you give examples. This will be especially beneficial if they are new to the role or if they haven't carried out this task before. This will help to add clarity to your instructions and help form a clearer picture of what is the you mean and want. You mean, mean and want. You mean and want. You mean and want. Mm -hmm. De lo que usted quiere decir y lo que usted quiere. All right, guys. Is there any questions so far? Are we okay? Okay, then. 
we are going to the breakout rooms, all right? You are going to practice and you are going to look up all the words that you don't understand, that you don't know, all right? You are going to look up, you're going to Google them, right? Look up in a dictionary, these words that you don't know, all right? And then you are going to answer the, one second, true or false bar, all right? The true or false bar. So we're going to take some time in the break of rooms. Just allow me to show. What you. are we doing? Sorry, teacher. What are we doing in the break of room? Okay. First, practice the reading, right? First, practice the reading. Second, you are going to look up the words that you don't know. Okay. Look up means buscar, right? And the dictionary or in, a Google, in the Google search, right? And then you are going to answer if these statements are true or false according to the article, all right? Okay, teacher. Okay. Okay, you are going to look up these words, not translating, all right? Let me explain this, all right? Not translating, but the meaning, all right? So you're gonna say, for example, I don't know what, uh, or butter it up, for example, then what does butter it up mean, all right? Then you write that um, concept in English, all right, in English, not Spanish. All right. It's on page 27. I have this situation. Do, okay. Is there any student as a listener right now? Or is it everybody available? Yes, teacher. All right. Thank God. There we are. There we go.
Soy ese yo te doy. Tu actitud fue violenta. Le enseñé mi placa y le dije. Because says, according to the article, it's, it is fine to make assumption. And the first paragraph said that you can uh, exception. Number four. Number four. This uh, to about about me. Mission the something one should be very cleaner in time frame. Y aquí dice. Y lo que dijiste sobre que las cámaras nos hacen responsables. Hola. Whenever possibility make sure you give example. ¿Verdad? In a few days, this communication is going to have serious implication in any business or project. Give examples. Whenever possible, make sure you give examples. This will be especially beneficial if they are new to the role or if they haven't carried out the, out the text before. This will help to add clarity to your instruction and help form a clearer picture of what it is you mean and when. Okay. And now, we find, uh, we search for a uh, words. Um, for example, would you, would you start um, first, Rafael? Yeah, okay, all right. Okay. Don't assume they know what you mean. You know what they say. That assumption is the mother of all mistakes. Don't be the fool that assumes people know what you mean. With most people in your office or business will be intuitive and switch on. They are not my readers and imperative when delivering peer instruction is to not assume the recipient knows what you mean. And this can be or anything from industry acronyms to who to contact in different departments or organizations. It will only take you a few seconds more to explain the details. Okay, I'm going to read number two. Be clear and specific. Everyone loves a wealth dripping in maple um, syrup. Syrup, please. But no one likes waffles in conversation and specifically noting an email or when it is a set of restrictions. Whilst, whilst you don't want to rumble on in your set of instruction, that would be a waste of your time 
and to be honest, they'd switch off after a while. You don't want to ensure that your instructions are clear, specific, and consist. Concise. Personally, I prefer not, not to bother it up. Will. Ah, como el que dijo, the while. Ah, uh, yes. While. Whilst, what you don't want to eat, eso de rumble, rumble. Mm -hmm. I oh. sí. Vamos a ver esta. Divagar. Yes. Yeah. So that will be a waste. Vaya, aquí está esta otra que dice switch off after a while. Alright, remember, remember that this is not translating, right? You were going to look it up, but the meaning in English, all right? Mm -hmm. ah, okay, yes. okay. okay. <laughs> Okay, another word. <laughs> and this is straight, get straight. Okay, another word. And number two or another word that we can so we can see. Ah. Uh. Mm, this. Flowery, flowery. Instructions oh. to flowery. Yes. Hagamos si gusta la otra parte, la de abajo. Number three. Las, la, el, el, la otra parte, according to the article, is it fine to make assumption? Uh -huh. False. Okay. Is it not? What? No. According to the article, it is fine to make assumptions. There no. are false. There is number no. assumptions. Mm. Number two is, is true. Number is one it is false. Important to go false. and try to the point to be clear. Yes, that is important. That true. Three is, is true. No, true. T R. T-R-U-E. Mm -hmm. True. Another people will get confused with the direction if we use too many words. Mm. 
A ver, ese estará en el número 3, creo yo. Give it and to choose my. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, so maybe the needs to be action delivered. I think that that's true. true. Because if you are not a specific, people would confuse with the question. People is confused. In the number three. Yes, yeah, true. Okay, to avoid misunderstandings, one la should la be very clear. Okay, mm. I don't know what to avoid. Misunderstanding. Mm. Well, I can't understand. Ah, okay. To avoid it, like mm, if we didn't have a uh, misunderstanding, misunderstandings should be very clear in time frames. True. In time uh, terms, misunderstanding is uh, to consider different from the colleagues. So Para evitar malentendidos. Correct. Go. Oh. One should be very. Is is true. <sighs> Is it true or is it false? It's true. Where is frame two? Two number four. Um, yeah. Pro. Que sería false porque primero hay que dar los ejemplos y después para evitar que cometan It's errores. Five please makes it better we can show some. Uh -huh. It's false. Pues porque yo les diría primero qué pasa con un ejemplo si le echan usan un extinguidor o un incendio eléctrico antes de que lo vayan a cometer como un error. Correct. In false. Mm -hmm. Entonces, 
Entonces quedamos con cuántos falsos y verdaderos. Voy a compartir con mi cámara. ¿Así? Ok. Tiche, uh -huh. vamos a hacer algo más aparte de leer y, y, y dar respuesta a esto. Yes, you have to look up the words that you don't know, but you have to look them up in English, all right? Not translating, all right? Buscar las palabras que no entienden en diccionario o en Google, pero no en español, ¿verdad? No a traducir, sino que a eh, buscar el significado en English. Meaning in English. Mm, ok. 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 De ahí de del de Super Selecto de la Olímpica hacia como que voy para el Estadio Cuscatlán, sobre las 59. Mm. Entonces yo ella relativamente en 15 minutos la voy a dejar al colegio. Hello. Pero, Hi, teacher. Hello, teacher. How are you? Okay, I'm fine. How's it going here? ¿Cómo les va? Uh, I sing for the... <laughs> for the... The respew. Uh, it's so, so, teacher. No problem. All right. But you have to yeah. look up the words that you don't know. All right? Not translating, but you have to look up the meaning. Okay? Look the meaning up. Uh, you can look it up in a dictionary or maybe in Google, all right? But not translating. Okay. Mm -hmm. ¿Quién la va a decir? ¿Usted la va a decir? No, the words that you don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> La, el, tanto, tanto el proyecto como la empresa, ¿verdad? Sí, correcto. Eso no, sí, no fue muy complejo bien. realmente. Se, seguiría. Give examples. No sé cómo, cómo decir. When, when, whenever. Whenever. Uh -huh. whenever, uh -huh. whenever possible, make sure you give examples. This will be especially beneficial. Um, beneficial? If they are they are new to the role or if they haven't carried out the task before, this will this will help to add clarity to your instruction and help from a clearer picture of what is you mean and want. <laughs> Very good. Did you look up your words? Yeah. All right. Did you look them up in English? And uh, yes, uh, we write in English in the translator. And, All right. Uh, we we write uh, um, it a part of the sentence. Uh, I will say this in Spanish. Si buscaron las palabras que no sabían. Yes. Sí. Por eso. Sí, por eso le decía que. Que la, la, las uníamos con cierta parte de la oración para tener entendimientos oh. conjuntas que, que significaban. 
in the context. Very good. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Sí, right. porque básicamente hay algunas frases que están en, en, el, en el contexto de ellos, ¿verdad? Que es muy diferente al de nosotros. Uh -huh. Entonces, uh -huh. pues son los que nos han tenido un poquito más distraídos. All right, all right. And did you finish the true or false? Hola. No. Did, did you finish the true or false uh, activity? No, no. Not okay. yet, not yet. Okay, then complete the true or false now. I see that you are reading very good now, all right? Okay. Ah, mi turno, ¿verdad? Yes. Keep it simple. Uh, whenever possible, make sure you keep it simple. This will be especially beneficial. Hello. Hello, teacher. Hello, teacher. We have a question. Mm -hmm. What What means straight? Eh, Puedes hacerlo un poco para de arriba. Ah, aquí straight. Ah, muy arriba. Get straight. Um. Okay, and we'll rather get straight to be the uh, the point. Uh, directo, ah, mm -hmm. directo. Okay. Mm -hmm. And flowery is is when equivalent when in Spanish we say florituras. I don't know that word in Spanish. I'm sorry. <laughs> eh, I don't know that. Muchas florituras a lo que está diciendo que. Okay. Ah, all no, right. Le, I think, yeah, but no, but I think flowery is when you are using uh, more words than needed, all right? Mm -hmm. More words than needed. For example, you are saying too much words, all right? Just to say one thing, right? Just to say something that it was easy and you were complicating things, saying a lot of words. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like politicians. <laughs> yes, because they want to try to uh, be so smart. Uh, like uh, no, no, camouflage, right? Camouflage the the uh, the lies, right? Uh, mixed and true or pieces of true that is why they do this right flowery okay flowery mm -hmm. speeches yes mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. and if you see uh the last part says which will only confuse right which will only confuse maybe you were going to think that you got it straight but you didn't all right you didn't get the point right Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And second part and the sentences, teacher. Uh huh. 
And number one, we think is false. Why? Because that's not good. Uh, the people can't uh, mean right either. Uh, right, like Flynn Rider. <laughs> no, it's the uh, reader, mind. Uh, <laughs> mind, mind reader, mind, mind reader. reader. Okay, ah. mind reader. Aha, uh -huh. no le lee la mente a uno, ¿verdad? To know what you are saying. They can't read your mind, all right? They don't know what you're thinking. So you've got to go straight to the point to be clear. Uh, it's right there, what we were reading. Uh, and you ask if it was correct to get straight the point or to be the point, right? But the thing here is that, yes, it is important. And we could say that in our culture, in our culture, Salvadoran, we say three words instead of one, right? So in English, people is more direct. People are more direct. I'm sorry. People, total, people are more direct, right? Mm -hmm. okay. And yes, it is important to go straight to the point to be clear. Yes, it is. It's true. I think so. Why did what? What did did you think that it was false? And the number one is uh, five. Number five yes. and number one. Yes, correct. No, I was thinking about number two because you told me that you were thinking that maybe it was false, but I think it is true too, all right? I think everybody, we can go back to the main room, all right? Let's go back. Okay, teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay, teacher. All right. Okay, mm. get ready, please. I'm going to call the roll. I forgot to do it. Well, we were busy. So now I'm going to call the roll for the second time. All right. Let's get ready. Turn, cameras on. Everybody, video on. And please say present when I call your name. Andrea Sofia Benitez Gomez. Blanca Alejandra Portillo Bermudez. Present. Carlos Ernesto Perez. Present teacher. Carlos Roberto Alemán Prudencio. Present teacher. Claudia Yamilet Corea. Present teacher. Elenilson Aparicio del Cid. Eric Jose Hernandez Campos. Present teacher. Hazel Elizabeth Navarro de Cervellón. Hazel. No, Hazel. Henry Alberto Pérez Rosales. Present teacher. teacher. Present, me sacó otra vez el Zoom. All right, Andrea, there you are. Juan Francisco Salmerón Alas. Present, teacher. Okay. Karen Yamilet Rivas de Ayala. Present, teacher. Magdiel Esaú García Morales. Present, teacher. Rafael Alexander Serna Díaz. Present, teacher. Rafael Antonio Barrera Díaz. Present, teacher. Ricardo Tony Mendoza Castro. 
Rosa del Carmen. Santa Present. María Tobar, thank you. Present. Santos Ezequiel Núñez Mejía. Wilber Alberto Pérez Méndez. Present teacher. José Adel Izaguirre Mendoza. Here present teacher. Pedro Alexander Osorto Sánchez. Present teacher. All right. Ready. So now I am going to ask. Present teacher. All right, Hernan. Thank you very much. Now okay. I will check you in. All right. Okay. Let's look it up. And none. All right. There you are. Thank you. Okay, then let's listen to, uh, well, group number three. Group number three was Blanca, Alejandra, Henry, Alberto, Pedro, Alexander, and Rosa del Carmen. All right. Please share with us the words that you looked up. No las Didn't you? Nobody. I mean, no, no, las, no las escribimos. What about the other groups? What about the other groups? It's I important. Wrote, I wrote it by Only practice. A notebook. On your notebook. All right. Yes. Can you just read them for us? Okay, but I advertise. That it's a dictionary. Ah, all right. Uh, waffle. Waffle. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, but it's blah, 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 blah. Uh -huh. blah, blah, blah. Yes. All right. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, uh, the match between a uh, switch up and switch on. And uh, it's when uh, people uh, don't understand for the because the, the people don't, it's not straight in the email. It's not specific. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I see, I saw two words, one with a L. Mm -hmm. One say, mientras, and the other one, mientras que. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's correct that. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. Even though if you, um, well, when we study those words in grammar, then you are going to see the difference. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right now, that will be another class. All right. Mm -hmm. Using while too. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, with uh, Carlos Aleman and my other classmate classmate um, uh -huh. i don't watch her ah claudia we are um figured out uh, these words in between the paraphrase uh -huh. dripping maple a uh, side up extra yeah. para uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, como chuparse el dedo um una frase que tenemos aquí en español Chuparse los dedos. Chuparse right? los dedos. Ajá. Mm -hmm. Pero eh, creo que llega, creo que llega a lo mismo, ¿verdad? Que mucha palabrería en la. Eh. Yes. Ajá. Ajá. Este cree que me pueden dar a tol con el dedo, ¿verdad? O oh, chuparme los dedos, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, like a father, father, get up, father, get up. Mm -hmm. It's the same. All right. Uh, uh, Butter it up is not exactly that, but it is, but it up is like giving uh, or flattering the other person just to make this person doesn't get angry with the thing that I'm saying, all right? Uh, flattering or, mm, yeah, flattering. Do, do you know what flattering is? Flattering? Uh, saying words to say worship, right? Worship or uh, adular, right? Something like that. Or say things in a very 
sweet way, all right? A very sweet way for they don't get angry that we are going to change this rule and it affects them, right? So, eh, kind of. Mm -hmm. Well, it has a lot of, of applications, but yeah, it's more that, mm -hmm. as you said, right? As you said, but not exactly like that. Not, not exactly like that. Butter it up is saying more words. Uh, there are kind words uh, in a fake way, right? You, you are saying something with your mouth, but you are thinking something that maybe it is not what you're saying, all right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. uh, that's all the words. All right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Uh, is there any other group who found uh, another word? Interesting words, interesting meanings. All right. Always that you uh, do reading. So please look up the words, not translate the words. Try to look up this in English. All right. This words in English. Why? Because we are going to enrich our vocabulary. We are going to learn family of words. We are going to know the function and ascendance of that word, how to use it, right? Not only here, maybe it has different meanings, right? So we are going to enrich our vocabulary. All right, guys. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Uh, we are going to continue with the false and true comprehension activity. So let's look over here, this slide. The slide is the one I prepared. All right, true or false, true or false. Let's look at, let's see, Carlos Ernesto. Carlos Ernesto, you there? Thanks, All right, yes. can you please tell me, number one, you read it and then you tell me if it is true or if it is false. Okay. According. According to the article, it is fine to make assumption. What do you think? It's false. It's false. All right. Can you tell me why? False. False. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me why? Uh huh. Because if you make assumptions, then it um it, everybody can be mistaken, right? Everybody can be mistaken. It's the mother of all mistakes, right? Is the mother assumption is the mother of all mistakes? All right. Number two. Number two. Let's see. Yeah. Carlos Roberto, please. Number two. Read and then okay. you tell me if it is true or if it is false. Okay. It is important to go straight to the point to be clear. All right. It's true. Is it true? Why? Because um use okay. Uh, so subject and verb. verb and complement. Uh-huh. Because mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because if you uh, are very flowery with mm -hmm. your words, mm -hmm. you can confuse the people and they switch on. Meanwhile, you are explaining only that. <laughs> All right. When you ramble, right? When you ramble, then uh, you can... Mm, uh, get people confused. All right. Yes. Thank you very much, Carlos. Now, what about number three? And let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I had the list. Uh, Claudia, please, number three, read the statement and tell me if it is true or if it is, or if it is false. And number three, people who I get confused why the direction if if we use too many words all right it's true all right 
Can you tell me why? Why is this true? Claudia? Hello, it's, um, because, uh, because the people um, se confunden. Can get confused, can get confused. Uh, get confused. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, why did the direction? If uh -huh. it's way used to manage work. All right, all right. You have to be straight, right? And don't use too many words. Very good. Thank you very much, Claudia. Yeah. Number four, number four. Let's try to see right here on the list. We are going to ask um, hmm. Carlos Ernesto, were you alone on the room number five? All right, Rafael Antonio, number four, please read the statement and say if it is true or if it is false. Rafael Antonio. Okay, teacher. To about measure, measure then there's something, something one should be very clear in time friends. It's true. All right, it's true. Bye, uh, Antonio, vamos a afinar esa pronunciación, okay? Primero, le voy a pedir que abra la boca, right? Open your mouth as you can, right? Okay, teacher. Y vamos a decir así, mire, to avoid, to avoid, a ver, dígalo conmigo, Antonio. To avoid misunderstandings. Misunderstandings. Ajá. One should be very clean in time frames. 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 Right. Frames. All frames. right. Very good. That's better. Thank you very much. Okay, guys. Why do you think that um, to avoid misunderstandings? You have to establish time frames. Ajá, el ejemplo que daba la lectura, a ver, ¿quién recuerda el ejemplo que daba la lectura? The word soon. Ajá. Could it be soon in hours? Could it be soon in minutes? Or could it be soon in days? We uh, don't know, right? Uh -huh. Tell me no, what we don't. No, teacher, uh, that's correct. We don't know because we think uh, what I say, they don't know what I mean. Exactly. So, soon can be before something happens. Soon can be uh, right now. Soon can be any time that you are thinking it is soon, right? But people is not, como decíamos en el grupo ahí con Rafael, ¿verdad? People are not mind readers. No le leen la mente and they don't know what you're thinking. All right. All right. So we have to establish very clear. All right. We're going to do this soon uh, for tomorrow afternoon. All right. That's a time frame. All right. That's a time frame. Frame is el marco, ¿verdad? Frame is un marco. For example, the window frame, the door frame, all right, that is marco. So time frame is el marco de tiempo o el periodo de tiempo enmarcado, right? So that's time frame. All right, number five, number five, please. Can you read that one, Ellen Nilsson? Number five and read the statement and tell me if it is true or false. It is fine if the employees make a mistake. Later, we can show examples. It is false. Teacher. All right, why? Because uh, 
it's uh oh the word is gone uh <laughs> but uh, subject it, verb and complement okay uh, uh -huh. the instruction is whenever possible make you sure you give examples first the first one mm -hmm. and this will this will be especially beneficial if they are new to the role mm -hmm. and that is the point right very good because if people are new uh doing that job then you have to give an example first how to do the things avoiding mistakes we don't want mistakes all right yeah. we don't want mistakes that's wasting money and resources wasting yeah. time wasting wasting all the resources from our company so we don't want to make mistakes and we don't want our team make mistakes either so we have to show an example first first right to avoid uh, mistakes very good thank you very much Ellen yeah. Nielsen you did a very good job here. you're welcome all right all right guys now we have our page number 28 all right page 28 and on the page 28 we have this extra grammar practice we are going to remind or remember the use of there is and there are and also we are going to create sentences with these words so we have to uh, unscramble the words all right so let's start Así vamos a ir al breakout room a hacerlo, pero ya es, uh, aquí lo vamos a hacer todos juntos, ¿ok? Yo me voy a poner en silencio para hacer el uno ustedes, ¿ok? Y luego hacemos el dos juntos, ¿ok? Everybody, I will um, mute myself and you may start. Así, vayan tomando turnos. Ah, bueno, vamos a hacer una cosa. Vamos a hacer, no, vamos a cambiar la dinámica. Vamos a ver, yo les voy a dar número a algunos, a siete de ustedes, ¿ok? Para que digan eh, la respuesta. Y luego vamos a dar eh, los otros cinco números, ¿ok? Así que vamos a ver. Solo voy a dar los siete primeros. Vamos a ver. Rafael Alexander. Number one, Ellen Nilsson, number two, Wilbur, number three, Magdiel, number four, Eric Jose, number five, Andrea Sofia, number six, Henry Alberto, number seven. All right, so I will mute myself. Um, there is any paper in the printer. It's a question. Uh, is there any paper in the printer? Number two. Me? Are there any computers available? Is there enough personnel at your company? Are there are there many conference rooms in your workplace? Uh, is there much light in your workplace? Are there many things do to do every day. Are they good places to have a break? Thank 
Thank you very much. Now, number one will be Blanca. Number two, Claudia. Number three, Pedro. Number four, Hernan. And number five, Rosa, please. Okay, you are not allowed. Teacher, I don't know how can I say allowed. 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 Okay, mm -hmm. yesterday I can hear it clearly, but okay. All right. You are not allowed to wear informal clothes. All right. Clothes. Mm -hmm. You are not allowed to wear in formal clothes. Okay. Una de las cosas es que esta palabra clothes, eh, nosotros, eh, bueno, como tiene una TH, tendemos a tratar de ponerlo como, ¿verdad? Pero también es, es aceptable decir close, como cerrar, close, all right? Okay, number two. Hi, teacher. Um, sería, are you are not? No. Ok, eh, Claudia, vamos a poner primero el sujeto. Entre todas esas palabras, ¿cuál cree que es el sujeto? El are. El are sería el verbo. El sujeto tiene que ser la persona, ¿verdad? O lo primero. Por ejemplo, en la primera era you. Ok, el nombre. Ah, perdón, perdón, perdón. Uh -huh. Ah, es, entonces es your, your, your are not. En este caso you no tenemos not... you, no lo tenemos you en, la, en las palabras. Tenemos, por ejemplo, el verbo smoke. Tenemos la palabra not. Tenemos la palabra employees, tenemos allowed, are, otro verbo, y yeah. to. La frase ya sabemos que es are not allowed, to. Entonces ya esa ya está salvada, ¿verdad? Vamos a ponerla aquí para que nos vayamos ubicando, ¿sí? Are not allowed, to. Entonces, ¿qué iría to. antes de esto? Sería el sujeto. ¿Cuál es el sujeto el ahí? Sujeto. Um, Ajá. En um, smoking. No, employees. Employees. Employees, uh -huh, employees are not allowed. Ajá. Uh -huh, are not allowed to what? To, to do what? To what? To? To a smoking. Yes. To smoke. 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 Okay. Ahora léame la oración completa, Claudia. Employees are not allowed to smoke. Thank you very much. Remember the pronunciation is allowed. Allowed. All right? Allowed. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, number three, guys. Who was number three? Help me here. Hernan, I think, right? Who was number three, guys? Was it Hernan? No, Hernan era number, number cuatro, ¿verdad? Pedro, were you number three? Uh, children, uh, it is not allowed in Britain. Vaya, en este caso necesitamos un sujeto. El sujeto puede ser children, el sujeto puede ser it, cualquiera de los dos. Vaya, para que podamos ordenarlo, to unscramble the words, para que podamos ordenarlo, vamos ubicando las que ya conocemos. Vaya, ¿Cómo es la frase que aprendimos ayer de que no es permitido? La frase era... Hello. Uh -huh. It is not allowed. Ah, entonces, it 
es el sujeto en este caso, ¿verdad? Aquí falta una palabrita, si no me equivoco, ¿sí? Aquí falta to, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Porque la frase completa es, it is not allowed to, ¿ok? Y luego uh -huh. viene el verbo. ¿Cuál sería el verbo? Children o bring? Bring. Bring, all right. Entonces, sería, it is not allowed to bring what? To bring in children. To bring, uh, puede ser bring in, all right, all right. Bring in children. Mm -hmm. All right, bring in children. Very good. Y en este caso, este es una phrasal verb, all right? This is a phrasal verb. All right, number four, number four. Fernan. Hi, teacher. You are number uh, four. Number four. Mm -hmm. um, we are not, and uh, we are not allowed to extend or launch time. Very good. We are not allowed to extend our launch time. Very good. Mm -hmm. okay, thank, thank you, Hernan. Thank you. All right, Rosa. Um, but um, well, uh, uh, people. Mm -hmm. People are not allowed check in too late. No sé si está bien así, teacher. All right. Mm -hmm. People are not allowed. Y luego el to. to mm -hmm. Y el to phrasal verb check is. Check in late. Yes. Very in good. Late. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. All right, guys. Is there any question so far about these exercises? You have any question? Esta estaba, estaba ya más fácil, ¿verdad? This was easier. All right. You sure no more questions? Teacher, I don't understand what is... Uh, it is not allowed to bring in children. Mm. To bring in. Uh, traer. Quiere decir traer, pero es uh, traer adentro. Sería como eh, el in que le está dando eh, la pauta, ¿verdad? Pero es traer. Uh -huh. Y en este curso, en este módulo, vamos a ver los phrasal verbs. All right. Uh -huh. Vamos a ver los phrasal verbs. Así que ahí vamos a ir definiendo y conociendo un poquito, porque tenemos este otro, mire, check-in, registrarse. En check-out es registrarse de salida, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. O chequear la salida. ¿Ya? Yeah. Este me falta extend. Ok. Rafael, are we okay there? Yes, teacher. Ok. All right. So it's 9.58. Uh, allow me to call the roll again, please. So please get ready. And remember that you have to do your homework and also you have to submit your midterm test. Is there any question about it? Is there any question about it? Is there any question about homework? No questions? Yes, teacher, I, I have a question. Tell and me, homework. Carlos. Mm -hmm. um, um, homework, sí. Um, I, I have a problem with three sentences. Uh -huh. um, sorry, I couldn't get what? What homework was it? 
six. All right. Homework, homework six. All right, number and, six. And translate three. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, sentence number, uh, what number of the sentence? Three. There is three distribution centers in Elopango. All right. There you have to write only one word if I'm not wrong. Just let me double check. Yes, you don't have to write the complete sentence. You just have to write R, all right, R. And you don't need any a capital letter, right? Just R. I... Mm -hmm. I type in only R in mm -hmm. the chat speaker and all right here. No, no, you have to write only R. Solo va a escribir la palabra R. Así. Um, yes. Pues, en las la oración completa. Sí, en la instrucción dice que hay que corregir la oración, pero lastimosamente ese campo se durmió cuando estaban haciendo la programación, entonces no, no entró la, la oración completa. Lo siento, Carlos, que se ha estado quebrando la cabeza, pero es solamente la palabra R, ok, quedó dormidito. Uh -huh. He was uh, switch up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, ajá. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, okay. Solamente va a escribir R, Carlos, ¿ok? Exacto, y lo mismo exacto. creo que le pasa con la otra, ¿verdad? ¿Era en pero esa? Ahí, ahí como vi un chat, bueno, ya, entonces así es y corregí otros, pero ah, como okay. los primeros me habían dado correcto la oración, pero en ese no, entonces no entendía cuál era la oración. Ok, era una cascarita por ahí. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Me, me disculpo en nombre de los programadores, ¿ok? Mm -hmm. All right, okay. yeah, ajá. Uh -huh. Es que a veces, eh, miren, hay var varios aspectos que ellos deben de cuidar, ¿verdad? Pero eh, ahí se les pasó por alto, pero yo sé que ustedes son muy comprensiv comprensivos, all right. Y todo así. <laughs> ok, I'm sorry, sí. guys. Uh -huh. Gracias. Ok. Uh, había otra en esa, ¿verdad? En la número 6. Si alguien quiere de una vez decirle para que no vaya a estar eh, Carlos con el, con el pendiente. No, en esa creo que todas son las oraciones, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver. Un, dos. Uh, en la ah, tarea 8 sí. también, teacher. En la tarea 8. ¿Ya hizo la tarea 8, Carlos? Sí, teacher. Solo okay. este me había quedado ya. ya lo ok. Conté. Ok, sí, hoy tiene que quedar listo, ya ha subido todo hasta el midterm test, ok, Great. para okay. que no tengamos en la auditoría ningún pero, ¿verdad? Que no me digan ahí, mire, su alumno tal, es ahí, estarles ahí puyando, ¿verdad? No, no, ustedes, yo sé que aquí todos son responsables y está de más decirlo, pero ay, tengo que decirlo y tiene que quedar ahí en constancia que lo dije. All right. Bien. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. Thank you. All right. Now, uh, I was about to call the road, right? O oh, ya la pasé. Guys, oh my God. Oh, no la pasé. All right. We're waiting for that. Ah, por eso es que no se me han ido todos. All right. I'm sorry. Ya ven ustedes, yeah. qué barbaridad. Ya se está apagando esta programadora. Vamos a ver. Andrea Sofía Benítez Gómez. Blanca Alejandra Portillo Present Bermúdez. Present right. Present teacher. Carlos Ernesto Pérez. Present teacher. Carlos Roberto Alemán Prudencio. Present teacher. Elenilson Aparicio del Cid. Present teacher. teacher. Claudia. Uh, yeah, Claudia y Amilet Coreas. Yes. Present, Present right. teacher. Good. Um, Eric José Hernández Campos. Present teacher. Hazel Elizabeth Navarro de Cervellón. Henry Alberto Pérez Rosales. Present teacher. Hernán Antonio Chacón López. Juan Francisco Salmerón Alas. Present teacher. Karen Jamilet Rivas de Ayala. Present teacher. 
Magdiel Esau García Morales. Present teacher. Uh, Rafael Alexander Serna Díaz. Present teacher. All right. Rafael Antonio Barrera Díaz. Present teacher. Ricardo Tony Mendoza Castro. Rosa del Carmen Santa María Tobar. Present. Santos Ezequiel Núñez Mejía. Wilber Alberto Pérez Méndez. Present teacher. José Adelis Aguirre Mendoza. Here present teacher. Pedro Alexander Osorto Sánchez. Present teacher. Eh, by the way, guys, eh, fíjense que yo normalmente pongo mensaje a los que hace, a los que faltan, pero que son responsables. Este, tengo, por ejemplo, a Santos Ezequiel. Si alguien tiene algún contacto de él, porque no me responde, tal vez alguien tenga algún contacto eh, que le pueda decir, a ver, es, qué le sucede, si está bien, ¿verdad? A ver si no le ha pasado Esto... algo. Teacher, mañana voy a ver si lo veo yo, porque ese es mi compañero de trabajo. Oh, okay, please tell him, tell okay, him no that we miss him, we miss him here. All right. Okay, okay people, so go to do your homework. Remember, ah, la, la sesión uno a uno está disponible. ¿Quién se quiere quedar? Cri, cri, cri. <laughs> Cuando me toca mi teacher. A ver, ah, ajá, ajá, vamos a ver, es cierto. Um, ah, no la segunda vuelta. Eh. Ajá, cabal. No, vamos a ver, este sería. Hoy es la videoconference number 10, le tocaría a Hernán Antonio. Hernán Antonio, si se quisiera quedar, a Wilber le va a tocar en la videoconference, en la última, Wilber. Pero si alguien no quiere quedarse, usted se puede quedar también, Wilber, ¿ok? Ahí está la salvedad. Vamos Me a ver. En la despedida. Ah, vaya, pues, si comemos pupusitas, sí. Vamos a ver. Hernán sí. Antonio, ¿te quiere sí, quedar? Sí. All right. Sí. All right. Yeah, I'm so happy. I'm so glad. Bye bye, everybody. Have a very good night. Remember to do your homework and your midterm test. Bye bye. Bye, teacher. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye, teacher. Bye bye. Okay, Hernan, how can I assist you? Okay, teacher. Um, revisando el diccionario con la actividad que usted nos puso a hacer, uh -huh. bueno, por lo común, yo había notado de que hay cierta simbología en la, en la pronunciación. Uh -huh. De esto todavía no hemos tocado nada. ¿Qué significan los apóstrofes? Que aparecen dos puntos, algunas letras invertidas. Entonces, eh, en eso sí tengo así como la inquietud. Que, ¿Qué significa? Yo sé que tiene que ver con la pronunciación, pero eh, yo sé que como que hay una regla referente a eso. No para si poder leer el, eh, los sonidos. O sea, ese se uh -huh. llama el alfabeto fonético. Alfabeto okay. fonético. Exactly. Uh -huh. Ese es el fonético. Poner, uh, phonics es una materia aparte totalmente, ¿verdad? Y uh -huh. ahí se aprende a leer todos los símbolos para saber eh, la duración del sonido de cada eh, palabra y también la articulación, ¿verdad? Entonces, hay sonidos cortos, hay sonidos largos, hay sonidos sordos, hay sonidos diferentes, ¿verdad? Y hay sonidos especiales, los... Um, eh, hay otros sonidos que son unidos, que son eh, special sounds, ¿ok? Son sonidos especiales, como, eh, por ejemplo, el que les envié el... Uh, video de la pronunciación de O G uh, O U G H, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Que es, se pronuncia diferente. Entonces, esos sonidos se pueden diagramar o se pueden dibujar de esa manera. Y normalmente los va a encontrar en el diccionario a la parte, eh, la palabra de cómo se pronuncia. Eh, sí, no hemos visto nada de eso acá, ¿verdad? No, no hemos mm -hmm. visto nada de eso acá porque está más eh, orientado a que usted hable rápido. Eso es una materia completa, ¿verdad? Ver, este, una este, materia completa. Pronunciation, mm -hmm. ajá. Ahí va phonics, letters y va sounds, ¿verdad? Son tres cosas que se miran en esa materia. Phonics, fonética, ¿verdad? Letters, 
las letras, su nombre y su función, ¿verdad? O sea, perdón, sería las letras y eh, cómo las unimos con otras letras, ¿verdad? Como blending the sounds, ¿verdad? Y luego, pues, the sounds, sounds. Ok, o sea que todavía falta para que lo veamos o, o probablemente... No, 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 no. Eh, por lo menos a, hasta ahorita, tal vez, eso, eso lo verá tal vez... Eh, si lo integráramos, uh, no recuerdo si en el intermedio hay algún apartado de leer eso. No, no recuerdo ahorita, pero probablemente, probablemente en el intermedio ya vayan viendo eso, ¿verdad? Porque ahorita, y sabe que eso es básico para los niños, ¿verdad? Que están aprendiendo a leer en inglés, ¿verdad? Para los niños que están aprendiendo a leer en inglés. Usted puede empezar viendo videos, ¿verdad? Y búsquelo así, phonics and sounds, ¿ok? Phonics okay. and sounds. Por lo menos para ver los, lo básico, ¿verdad? Lo básico. Sí. Bueno, sería alfabeto fonético en sí, ¿verdad? Pero Exactamente, ajá. Phonics. Dice que tiene la fonética y las letras. Uh -huh. Y los sonidos. Fonet los sonidos es lo mismo de la fonética. Sí, sí y no, porque acuérdese que la fonética tiene incluso de cómo se pone o la postura de todo el aparato fonador, ¿verdad? Ah, okay. uh -huh. yeah. Entonces, el sonido es, por ejemplo, entran los sonidos especiales, ¿verdad? Entran los sonidos eh, comunes, digamos, pero que uh, la letra no es igual a cómo se pronuncia, ¿verdad? Entonces ahí entra eso. Entonces por eso se dice sounds, así, phonics, and letters. Mm, right. okay. uh -huh. Sounds, phonics, and letters. Ahí es donde se mira todo eso. Entonces ahí puede empezar usted a, a ver podría comenzar incluso con el sonido de las vocales, ¿ok? Para iniciar eso, vowel sounds, ¿ok? Vowel sounds. Vowel sounds. Y ahí usted va a ver short sounds and long sounds, ¿ok? Ahí puede, ajá, puede buscar eso y para ubicarse como es. Sí, sí, siempre he tenido esa inquietud, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Pero... Eh, Voy a intentar igual. compartirle un, un pequeño material, ¿verdad? De el alfabeto con su sonido fonético, uh -huh. ¿ok? Voy a tratar de compartirle ese material. En cuanto ya lo tenga listo, yo se lo paso. Hoy. Ok, uh -huh. pero ese, ese viene así como eh, todo el abecedario. No. Sí. Todas las letras tienen su propia representación del sonido. Uh -huh. Sí. Uh -huh. okay. Todas las letras yeah. para saber cómo se pronuncia. Ajá. Y ahí en sounds también se miran los eh, acentos, el stress, ¿verdad? En qué sílaba recae y todo eso, ¿verdad? En sounds. Ajá. Como, bueno, en el español se va tildado la, donde lleva la mayor fuerza. ¿verdad? Es fácil, las palabras, ajá. Las agudas, las, eh, las graves, las esdrújulas. Entonces, eh, con el inglés no, o sea, no existe eso. Entonces, eh, igual a mí me pasa cuando tengo una lectura y donde lleva la mayor fuerza. O sea, con la simple lectura, o sea, tengo que poner un video o buscarla tal vez en el diccionario cómo se pronuncia, ¿verdad? Exacto. Pero siempre me topo con la simbología y digo, ¿y qué significa esta simbología? Ajá, exacto, Ajá. tiene toda la razón. Pero también es, es eh, sí hay reglas, hay reglas también para los acentos o para saber dónde va el stress o el, la mayor fuerza de voz en las palabras en inglés también. Hay una, hay una serie, ¿verdad? Por eso esto es una materia completa. ¿Verdad? Es pronunciation, uh -huh. phonics, sounds, and letters. Uh -huh. Por eso okay. le decía, puede comenzar con las vocales a ubicarse. Busque, eh, si va a buscar usted material, busque short vowel sound. 
en long vowel sound para saber el sonido corto y el sonido largo. Y así usted se los va aprendiendo poco a poco, ¿verdad? Porque ya solo ahí se le hacen 10 sonidos. ¿Verdad? Sí. Ya solo ahí se le hacen 10 sonidos, el largo sí. y el corto. El corto, ¿no? Exacto. Sí, sí, de ahí hay otros sonidos, por ejemplo, cuando se une la letra E con otra letra E, ¿verdad? Suena diferente. Cuando se une, o los diptongos, ¿verdad? Ya se une una U con una I, ¿cómo, cómo suena eso? Una O con otra O, una O con U, ¿verdad? Entonces todo eso hay que irlo aprendiendo poco a poco, ¿verdad? Para que... Eh, pueda irlo eh, emulando el sonido, porque esto su cerebro lo tiene que grabar, ¿verdad? Entonces, poco a poco, ya solo ahí lleva 10 sonidos. Media vez yo le tenga preparado eso, entonces ya se lo paso, ¿ok? Ya. Perfecto, teacher. Entonces, esa era la inquietud que surgió ahora, más que todo, cuando estamos buscando las, las letras. Ajá. ¿verdad? Así que ya vi que no es, no es así por así, es algo más complejo, entonces de, es toda una materia. Sí, exacto. Es toda una materia, pero lo básico lo podemos ir aprendiendo así, ¿verdad? Perfecto, okay. esa era la inquietud que tenía entonces para, para hoy. ¿verdad? All right, all right. Bye. Ok, have gusto. a very good night then, Edman. Bye, teacher. Gracias. Bye, bye. See you tomorrow. See you. Sí.